work today and on her first international trip as Prime Minister, has promised to commit £2.3 billion worth of military aid to Ukraine, matching the figure provided by the UK in the previous year. She made this announcement on a visit to a major UN summit in New York. So is this money well spent if it hastens the end of the war, or does it prolong the agony? And can sending billions abroad be justified at a time when so many Brits are struggling at home? To debate this, I'm delighted to welcome Conservative MP and Chair of the Defence Select Committee in the House of Commons, Tobias Elwood, and the UK correspondent of the popular news website, news online, Rebel News, uh, Lewis Brackpool. So let me start with you, if I can, Lewis. Uh, do you think it's justified to send billions to Ukraine when so many Brits are struggling? Uh, it's quite simply no. Uh, Britons are going to have a very, very tough winter, to be totally honest. And this idea of this being a cost of living crisis, well, in fact, it's actually a cost of lockdown and a cost of this eco fanaticism with green policies and the sanctions upon Russia, which is actually hurting ordinary people over oligarchs over in Russia. And this stigmatization of putting the British people first is sort of been running this course for quite a long time now, which I don't think it's a disgusting thing to say that we should be putting our people first. And the, the famous quote, charity starts at home, uh, should really be applied there. However, we know, don't we, that Russia's invasion of Ukraine, as well as being a humanitarian crisis, Lewis, is artificially spiking the cost of global energy. So, isn't this money well spent if it brings the war to a swift conclusion? Well, according to figures that uh, we rely on 4% actually of energy from Russia. So this idea of fueling and uh, sending billions and billions of pounds, I think we're up to about 5 million pledged so far. I think the main question to ask is, where is this money going? I mean, we can't verify exactly where this is heading. So I think that would be more the appropriate question to ask in my, in my view. Weaponry, uh, manpower, don't we want to see Putin defeated? Absolutely, absolutely. But this is a war that, is, that is, we shouldn't be a part of, in my humble opinion. We're sending billions and billions <clears> of pounds and interfering with something that uh, we, in my personal opinion, shouldn't be a part of, in my to total honesty. I mean, we have so much, so many problems in our backyard with inflation. Uh, the idea of going cashless very soon is a, is a big concern. Of course, the energy crisis, like you mentioned, our open borders as well, where anyone can get into a dinghy from France and travel over to the UK. And of course, business owners are going to struggle to keep their doors open in the coming months. And the, the Tory government has, has mentioned this idea of this magic money tree that's, uh, that doesn't exist. but all of a sudden, we can now find the money to, to send to Ukraine, this bastion of democracy. Tobias Elwood, welcome to the programme. Should Britain be pledging £2.3 billion amid a cost of living crisis and towards a war that some are calling the forever war? Yeah, I'm sorry to hear some of those views. I'm glad you pushed back a little bit. The idea that we live in isolation and that we can just turn our backs on what goes on in other parts of the world is, is for the birds, it really is. The reason why we have inflation here, the reason why there is a migration problem is because people are trying to get away from war zones and so forth. And if Britain doesn't step forward, as we've done in the past, and lead other like-minded nations, then these problems are only going to get bigger. The reason why food is so expensive in this country is because the grain can't get out of Ukraine. So the grain price, international grain prices have gone up. The reason why oil and gas is expensive is because it's not getting across Europe. That affects the entire gas and oil market. And that's what's causing inflation in this country. I repeat, if we don't step forward, which nations will? You can't say, yes, I want Putin defeated. I want Putin outside of, of Ukraine and not be willing to step forward. That's a 1937 view of the world. I make it really, really clear. Our world is getting more dangerous and more complex. Democracies are on the decline. Authoritarianism is on the rise. And if we don't wake up and work with allies, such as the United States, and there's others that are in the UN right now meeting, then I'm afraid then we're in for a very bumpy decade indeed. 
However, do we know, Tobias Selwood, where this money is going? Is there accountability for these billions? Of course there is, absolutely. We're not a country that simply throws money at another nation and not ha has any account for it. Part of my job on the Defence Select Committee is to make sure we see where this money is spent, how it's spent. Some of this money is training Ukrainians to do the fighting, uh, being trained on Salisbury Plain. Others is, is more expensive uh, and more complex weapon systems, which we're now seeing the result of. Guess what happened last week? a massive push by the brave Ukrainians in pushing uh, Russia out. But I make it very, very clear, this won't stop in Ukraine. If we don't put this fire out in Ukraine, then Putin has every intention to spread his Slavic influence in other parts of Eastern Europe. And he is teaming up with China. This is the big change that we need to recognize, this access that is developing, that they've decided they've had enough of the international rules-based order, and they now want to exploit the differences and the problems and ensure that the West, in, in particularly the United States, remains weak. This is the world that we need to recognize and live in. This is the world that we need to stand up to. This is what Britain does. We lead on the international stage. We don't run away from our problems. Uh, Lewis Brackpool, uh, you've been doing uh, Emily Maitlis style eye rolls there. What's your view? Well, I just think this idea, like I just mentioned, that uh, a magic money tree never sort of existed, but all of a sudden we can now just pledge five billion pounds to uh, a, a, just a, a war miles and miles away when people are, are going to be struggling, like I've mentioned, this winter. And you can't verify where this, act this money is actually being spent. And I mean, the vice prime minister of Ukraine uh, actually uploaded a video quite recently called Ukraine 2030, which showcases their idea of building this new Ukraine post-Russia-Ukraine war, where you're seeing uh, a, a digital world, as they're calling it, without a bureaucracy, AI courts, everything is registered via your smartphone, everything is going cashless and paperless, school lessons are done online, e-health services, e-services e via your smartphone, and every production facility has an ultra-modern iron dome. So I, I don't see how you can, you can basically sit there and say, Let's pledge more money, five million pounds, as I, five billion, sorry, pounds, as we've gotten to, and you can sit there and, and justify it when we can't verify exactly where it's going. Uh, Tobias Elwood, you're shaking your head. Yeah, I mean, astonishing to hear some very, very mixed messaging there, talking about issues which may be important but completely irrelevant to what's going on in Ukraine. If you think things are expensive now, allow this war to continue. Allow uh, Putin to continue on his ad adventurism, as I say, teaming up with China. Then things in Britain are going to get very, very difficult indeed. If we don't solve this energy crisis, then more of us are going to be in the dark, not just this winter and in the cold this winter, but further beyond that as well. We need to lean into our problems, not run away from them. And if you want to know where the money is spent, come to Parliament, sir. Come and listen to the debates. Come to my committee. Come and listen to where, how it's spent. This is what government, this I'd is love what to. parliament does. We scrutinize what our government does to make sure every single penny is absolutely accounted for. And if it's not, then we make noises. We make sure that the government knows. So this, this bland suggestions that five billion pounds is, is poorly spent, I'm afraid it's, it, it, it's showing an ignorance of understanding of this, what we're discussing here today, I'm afraid, brief, with respect brief, to, the, to the other speaker. Brief, uh, brief last word, Lewis. Yeah, I just think it's it's just silly. I don't think it's a bad thing to say that we should be putting our own first. Uh, that's not a, a horrible thing to say. And remember, we've got so many things that we should be worrying about, uh, not only just this winter time, but the impending uh, happenings of this country. So, yeah, I, I just think it's 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 poor. Uh, briefly, apologies. Uh, we, we've got uh, the clock against us, Tobias Elwood. But um, is this generosity, this largesse towards towards uh, Ukraine, which you've argued is in the national self-interest. Uh, is it time limited? And also, is there a fiscal cap? I mean, will we still be pledging two or three billion a year in 10 years time? These are really important questions to ask, because as I say, if we allow this war in Ukraine to spread, then yes, we're into another uh, third you know, European uh, potentially global war. It'll be different from the last war, but that's where we're heading. And the idea that we can suddenly okay. run away from this and just look after little England is, is really um, irresponsible in a major way. 
So let's work with our allies. Let's step forward and stand up to authoritarianism. Although, as I said, we're in for a very, very dark decade. Uh, this show is all about opinions. Thanks for both of yours. Uh, many thanks to Tobias Elwood, Conservative MP and Chair of the Defence Select Committee in the House of Commons, and Lewis Brackpool, journalist and UK correspondent for the popular news website Web Rebel News. Uh, let's move on now. Um, a man has been jailed for 10